Welcome to this session that discusses the new asset life cycle with planned initial state, which is available in the 23A release of the Oracle Utilities Work and Asset Cloud Service. In this session, we will talk about this new feature and how it can impact your business. I'll give you an overview of the creation and installation of non-tracked assets at planned status, followed by more detail explaining how you would use it and the benefits to your business. Then we'll walk through a demonstration, and finally we'll explain what you need to consider when implementing this product in your business and provide you with some additional resources. We've basically put the creation of the asset record in the hands of the person most qualified to be doing that and taken away the need for field personnel to be able to perform that task. This way, the asset record is more likely to be created with the correct BO and appropriate information. Now let's take a look at how we now support the creation and installation of non-tracked assets at plan status. So first I'm going to start in an older release and show you the current functionality just in case you're not aware of it. So we'll look at the business object first. This is the lifecycle business object. And you'll see that there are a number of business objects under it, um, general in and out of service pipes, in and out of service pole and whatnot. But the thing to note, because this is the lifecycle business object, it starts at in service. So if I were to create an asset, of one of the asset types that uses that business object, in and out of service pole, it starts at in service status. I don't get a choice. That's my status it starts at. And an additional functionality, if I were to go to a construction work management activity to install a pole at planned status, this is the planner planning this activity, you see I don't have any asset actions because it's at planned status. I don't get asset actions until I approve the work order. Let's go to the work order. Approval. And then my work order is at active status, as is my activity. So I go back to that activity that didn't have any CU actions and go to the Compatible Units tab. Now that it's at active status, as in I've already scheduled it to a crew, the crew would see a button. It says create asset. So you're asking the crew to click on the create asset button. We've already got the asset type as wood pole. And what are you going to see? We'll use the current location. It's creating it in service status. No choice. In service. That's the old functionality. Let's swap over to a different browser and we'll look at the new functionality. Before I do that, I just want to touch on some of the things that have been changed. So before I was on the uh, asset root uh, business object, the life cycle business object, we still got my in-service, out-of-service pole. Now for the life cycle, I see a started life cycle of plan status instead of in-service. That any business object under this life cycle BO is going to start out life at plan status. And I also wanted to touch on a couple of algorithms that we added. So this is only for asset sync information. So for asset sync, this algorithm looks and says, do I want to see if the Esri integration is on? Yes, I want to see if the Esri integration is on. When that sync comes in, the asset will automatically be transitioned to in-service status. If I set that to no, don't bother looking at that parameter that asset is going to go to in-service regardless of whether the Esri sync is on or not. And we've got the same algorithm if that business object sync comes in at error status. Same question. So now in the new instance, if I go and create an asset with that same asset type as it happens, going to start out at plan status. Quite different. And if I go look at that construction work activity, same basic setup, 
same compatible unit. I'm at plan status. I already have an asset action of create asset. And when I click on that action, remember in the other instance, uh, when I clicked on create asset, it was being created at in service as in in service right now. It's being created at plan status. So the planner can create the asset record at the appropriate location with all of the appropriate asset information on it so that the crew doesn't have to create the asset record. We don't have to train our crews how to create an asset record correctly. And that is the status. That asset will go over in the OFS integration so the OFS crew doesn't need to create an asset. They could just potentially update the badge number on the asset, but they don't have to create the asset record. They don't have to select the right asset type. It's all done for them before it even goes out the door. And that about does it for the new functionality. Hope you enjoy using it. In this implementation advice section, we'll go through what you need to consider before enabling this feature in your business and what you need to know to set it up. Well, as it happens, there actually isn't anything you need to do to enable this functionality. It comes already enabled. Nothing for you to configure. But some things for you to be aware of, we have added a new lifecycle business object. And then the BOs under that business object that get new application services. And if your user groups contain those original application services, we'll update them for you with an upgrade script. We've added a couple of new algorithms. Those algorithms are looking to see if the Esri GIS integration is on or not. That's when the algorithm is set to yes. If you were to set those algorithms to no, it doesn't matter if the uh, GIS integration is turned on or not. That asset's going to get transition to in-service. And that's about it that you need to know. For information about the new asset lifecycle with planned initial state, see the Work in Asset Cloud Service documentation on Oracle Help Center, which is available at docs.oracle.com. The current content of the training available within the Oracle Utilities WAM certification learning path that you can access on Oracle University at education.oracle.com doesn't happen to cover this content. That training is based on prior release and is in the process of being updated. This concludes this presentation. Thank you for watching.